Welcome to the presentation of Kiwi and uh, Sleepos. So, uh, what is Kiwi and uh, what is uh, SUSE Linux Enterprise point of service? Uh, I've prepared for you uh, this agenda uh, for this presentation, and uh, we will start uh, this presentation with. Uh, quick overview of Kiwi imaging system, and then proceed how we use it uh, in SUSE Linux Enterprise Point of Service. So, what is Kiwi? Uh, Kiwi is an imaging system, imaging system, uh, image system uh, with the basic uh, workflow that uh, first uh, configuration file is uh, prepared uh, channels uh, with the packages uh, is uh, configured and then we just uh, build the system. Uh, I prepared this uh, presentation mainly for the people from the uh, business, So, but uh, I see that uh, most of you are uh, from uh, SUSE uh, and uh, development, so I will try to uh, go uh, through this uh, business information uh, quickly and uh, maybe uh, proceed then uh, with uh, the technical information later. Uh, I would like to keep this uh, presentation uh, interactive, so anytime you would like to learn something more, uh, do you have any questions, don't hesitate uh, to interrupt. Uh, with Kiwi we can build uh, many uh, different kind of uh, images. Uh, uh, very often th these are live systems uh, deployed uh, on the uh, USB sticks or delivered uh, by ISO and uh, also we can build uh, virtual images but uh, for our solution uh, the most uh, interesting are uh, Pixie images and uh, OEM images. So, what is SUSE Linux Enterprise point of service and uh, how we use uh, Kiwi in this solution? Uh, SUSE Linux Enterprise point of service is uh, just a small add-on that uh, is deployed on top of uh, standard SLES uh, 11 uh, uh, installation uh, with uh, the intention to create uh, uh, infrastructure uh, that can help uh, our customers to deploy large set of clients. Uh, there are three layers of this infrastructure. Uh, in the beginning, uh, the administration server uh, is uh, prepared and uh, complete the configuration of the deployment and the clients is created in the LDAP. Uh, and also images that uh, will be uh, later deployed on the clients uh, are prepared uh, on the uh, admin server and stored also on the admin server. Once this uh, uh, preparation uh, is finished, uh, we proceed with the synchronization uh, of this uh, configuration and of the images to the branches uh, where the branch servers are uh, located. Uh, these uh, branch servers are uh, located uh, generally in each store where the uh, clients uh, will be run later. And uh, after the branch servers have, uh, uh, have been provided with all those uh, informations, uh, you just uh, plug in uh, the cache register into the branch server which uh, uh, via Pixie uh, deploys uh, automatically uh, the system and starts working. So these are quick facts about SUSE Linux Enterprise point of service. Uh, admin server, branch server and uh, image creator which can be combined uh, for small installations uh, with the admin server or for large installations where more images uh, are expected uh, can be uh, run on a separate server. Uh, these are the highlights and points uh, why 
uh, SUSE Linux Enterprise uh, point of service uh, is preferred uh, from uh, Linux customers who use it. Uh, it is a uh, very efficient uh, way uh, how to move uh, very quickly uh, also in the pre-sale toward proof of concept and also to administra administrate and configure the system uh, later. Uh, this is a quick uh, and uh, fast overview of all products that uh, SUSE is uh, uh, providing uh, to our customers today. And uh, SUSE Linux Enterprise Point of uh, Service uh, cooperates uh, also with the other two products uh, to uh, prepare a portfolio for our post solutions. Uh, this is a SUSE Studio and SUSE Manager. So Kiwi is the tool that uh, can create the images and uh, as a uh, convenient uh, graphical user interface uh, in, uh, image creator, Yast module can be used or uh, also SUSE Studio can be used uh, to build the, the images and also to use a large uh, uh, variety of uh, prepared appliances. Uh, SUSE Manager uh, can be used uh, uh, to uh, patch, monitor, uh, configure and uh, administrate uh, the uh, large set of uh, clients uh, deployed uh, via uh, Sleepos uh, with a user-friendly graphical user interface. So this is our uh, portfolio of products uh, that uh, is positioned uh, to serve the needs of the customers in the retail market. So now a few details about SUSE Linux Enterprise Point of Service uh, 11, Service Pack 2. This Service Pack 2 uh, has been released in April this year and uh, we uh, prepared uh, large set uh, of features uh, to help our customers to use this uh, solution uh, efficiently. Uh, we try uh, and do our best uh, to uh, keep uh, the tools on the same ver version uh, over the, the three products uh, that uh, use them. This is a SLES. SUSE Linux Enterprise Server, uh, SUSE Linux Enterprise Point of Service, and uh, also uh, SUSE Studio uh, to keep uh, the compatibility. Uh, this is a very interesting uh, uh, part uh, of uh, our uh, latest uh, evolution. And uh, toward Service Pack 3, we introduced the uh, Feature Pack concept. So what is uh, feature pack uh, concept? Uh, very often happens that uh, you know, customers require uh, enhancement uh, that uh, shall materialize uh, quicker than 18 months between the service packs. And uh, therefore, uh, we uh, move toward uh, Sleepos 11 SP3 uh, with uh, uh, concept of feature pack. Definition of uh, feature pack, uh, mainly to deliver the enhancements uh, within the period of service pack and uh, also uh, to meet the market demands, uh, of course, uh, with uh, uh, restrictions that uh, must be met because uh, between the uh, service pack uh, releases, we cannot influence other products so uh, within these uh, feature packs, we just introduce uh, new enhancement that have no impact uh, on other products. And uh, of course, uh, to uh, uh, proceed consistently, uh, these uh, enhancements build uh, logical complexes. Uh, uh, therefore, feature pack one, uh, uh, 
may be uh, confusing, uh, but uh, toward uh, SP3, we still uh, use uh, the label SP2 because these features are built on top of uh, SP2. Therefore, uh, we name uh, this new feature pack 1 as SleepOS 11 SP2 feature pack 1. This has been released in August uh, this year, and uh, the main reason for this feature pack was uh, the introduction of uh, wireless uh, deployment uh, of the uh, clients. Uh, to uh, pre uh, to uh, implement uh, this feature, uh, we had uh, also uh, to uh, we had also uh, to implement a few uh, related uh, features. We introduced a service partition, uh, and uh, as a consequence, uh, this enabled us uh, also to introduce uh, a transfer of uh, uh, multicast uh, images via multicast TFTP. And because uh, we now uh, enable also the wireless uh, interface, uh, we uh, uh, automatically configure all available uh, network adapters in the system. Uh, if you have uh, more uh, technical questions, uh, I would like uh, to uh, point uh, you uh, also to uh, uh, project manager of SLEEPOS, Joachim Plack, and uh, also to team lead of the SLEEPOS team here in Prague, Peter Ostiadal. Uh, then we proceed uh, with uh, feature pack two, uh, which has been released uh, beginning of the October. And uh, mainly uh, we prepared uh, materials and documentation uh, for our sales engineers to uh, move toward uh, proof of concept uh, faster because not only our sales engineers but also engineers from our customers and partner very often complains very often complain uh, that uh, sleepos uh, is uh, very complex and uh, hard to learn which is uh, uh, in the end uh, true uh, because uh, sleepos is uh, very flexible and uh, customizable and uh, it is not from uh, the, that easy uh, for the beginners uh, to uh, go through all these details and uh, prepare the uh, first installation uh, quickly. So this is the most important part of uh, the presentation, wireless clients. So uh, wireless clients uh, uh, got uh, one specific uh, because uh, there is no Pixie booting available for wireless adapters. Uh, as we are used uh, uh, in the network uh, uh, Ethernet uh, adapters. And uh, my understanding is that uh, this is uh, mainly because uh, uh, of the uh, security uh, concerns, uh, because uh, uh, the when the wireless uh, client uh, would like to proceed with Pixie booting, it must uh, connect uh, first uh, to an access point uh, with uh, the full uh, encryption and uh, full security, uh, of course. So therefore, uh, we uh, decided uh, to proceed uh, with uh, two steps, uh, which in the end uh, the Pixie uh, uh, booting uh, provides by default, because when the images uh, 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 are built, uh, uh, Pixie images are built uh, with uh, Kiwi. The first stage, so called boot image, is created, uh, uh, and then uh, the second stage uh, is uh, the uh, system image. So the procedure of uh, Pixie booting uh, is to uh, download uh, from the uh, server uh, via Pixie uh, first stage or the boot image kernel and init RD started. Uh, and then proceed uh, downloading uh, the system image and deploy it. So uh, during the, our feature pack uh, one, we prepared a solution how to uh, create uh, the 
boot image with uh, pre-configured uh, wireless, uh, which uh, uh, is uh, deployed uh, in a uh, ser service partition. Uh, so uh, when the uh, client uh, starts, uh, uh, then the client boots this uh, uh, boot uh, uh, image uh, from the uh, service uh, partition, connects uh, to the access point and uh, proceeds with the deployment of the system image uh, from the uh, branch server as it was uh, exactly the, the way as it was uh, before via uh, standard Pixie process. So this is uh, uh, generally the end uh, of uh, the presentation and uh, I would like to ask you uh, if you uh, just provide you with a uh, few more information uh, for, for those who are uh, interested and also would like to uh, ask you for the questions. Yes, exactly. So uh, our customers come uh, from, uh, at the moment uh, from the retail business. Uh, uh, as uh, uh, example, uh, for example, uh, Coop in Switzerland uh, is uh, using uh, our sol solution. Also, uh, large retailers uh, in the United uh, States and uh, other retailers uh, across Europe. So. Uh, uh, Despite the fact uh, that uh, uh, we are talking uh, about uh, cash registers or deals, uh, this uh, solution is of course uh, generally usable for uh, all kind uh, of uh, devices that uh, can Pixie boot or uh, can boot also via wireless. Either they are uh, cash registers or uh, clients and of course uh, uh, any uh, other devices uh, that are using uh, Linux. Uh, one of the uh, possibilities is of course uh, and uh, maybe uh, can be expected a large uh, uh, usage of uh, this solution uh, also uh, in the OEM market because uh, if a large uh, uh, set uh, of any uh, embedded uh, uh, Linux devices uh, shall be uh, configured uh, uh, very quickly, efficiently, without uh, manual uh, installation, then uh, just the uh, boot image uh, shall be prepared, delivered to the uh, manufacturer and uh, just uh, deploy it uh, uh, within the manufacturing process. Uh, of course, with the cooperation of the potential customer who uh, delivers the configuration of the access points and then just roll out the large set of clients which uh, uh, when switched uh, on the place just uh, connects, uh, downloads the image which is a flexible method of uh, deployment of the system image and start to operate the way as the customer expects. Uh, yes, so the updates uh, is something that uh, we uh, deal uh, very often, very quickly, and uh, is the default uh, uh, requirement uh, by our customers. So. Uh, Sleepos automatically uh, provides the uh, clients uh, with the, up the updates uh, this way that uh, when the uh, client uh, starts, uh, uh, restarts or boots, 
uh, automatically checks uh, with the branch server uh, if there is an update of the system image and uh, if there is one, automatically downloads, uh, deploys this new image uh, with, uh, and uh, this process uh, is uh, transparent uh, uh, to the user. So basically, for you, you have to think of all that solution as being suitable for all kind of mass deployments. So we also have customers that have have desktops there in a bank. And that's that's kind of working. Everything you can configure with our imaging tools, you can deliver. The general way to delivering it is is kind of I gets rsync from from the central office to the branch offices which can work disconnected and which have a, a, a replica LDAP server running. So they do replicate part of the LDAP tree and the central configuration. And from there, this works as a Pixie boot server. Or now with that service partition, you can imagine of all kinds of dirty things you can do. Because yeah, you can kind of pre-configure the image, the OE image, put it, put it on, the, on the client just from from the fab and uh, you can right now we have we have it tailored for wireless support out of the box but you could also tailor it out of for vpn support out of the box or other things anything you can do with the linux kernel you can put it in an init rd you can put it on the service partition and can come up out of the box like that so that's kind of it's it's pl pretty flexible in that way so everything you can, every organization you can fit in that central approach where, where you might be disconnected between the branch server and the admin server from time to time, you can deliver it like that. So the updates, number one, yes, the idea is going through images, but what you can do, we have this, this SUSE Manager product, which also is for delivering images and for keeping inventory stuff. And so. So the future idea is, if you like to, you can configure on the, on the image side and, and put also the RPM stack on it, onto the image, then you can work through regular updates. But the, the idea currently is we have an SMT server running aside with the, on the, uh, the admin server and the POS image server, uh, so, so that automatically it pulls the updates and you just have to recreate the image and, and deliver it, so that's it pretty easy. In the end, uh, this boils down ju ju uh, uh, to decision of, of the customer uh, if uh, he would like uh, to keep uh, just this simple solution or also the, to use advanced uh, uh, tool like uh, tool like SUSE Manager. Custom. So can the initial boot that service image also cu uh, customized for the individual device because you often have a general image which has, for example, all zero, uh, zeros in the serial number and the serial number is also set because you need some information for the central stage. What should it set, for example? Uh, yes, so there are three groups uh, of uh, clients. Uh, this is a, a default group. Then uh, the client uh, can be uh, individually uh, uh, set up by a MAC address. And there is also a third uh, option, uh, which is based uh, on the uh, hardware uh, info uh, from, the, from the BIOS. So, uh, uh, group of uh, configuration can be uh, assigned uh, to this special group of uh, hardware. Uh, this is a standard uh, procedure how to configure this uh, large set of clients and it is stored in LDAP.
uh, and uh, recently we introduced the configuration via XML. So this kind of configuration is uh, pretty straightforward and easy. Yes, please. Say, say you want to change the uh, password of the VPA, with the VPA password, is it then easy to, to um, configure the new, the new password by installing a new service partition? Uh, there are a few possibilities uh, how to deal with that. Uh, First, I would like to mention that uh, I would recommend uh, to the customers to uh, use the wireless deployment uh, via two stages. Uh, first would be uh, to prepare one access point uh, with a general uh, access the data and passwords. Uh, and then once uh, the system is deployed, then just uh, reconfigure it uh, for a daily use uh, to another uh, 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 probably more secure uh, password. But uh, there are any kind of scenarios. The second possibility is, uh, of course, uh, if uh, this uh, uh, password is compromised uh, and has already been set and uh, uh, let's say hardwired uh, in the uh, boot image, there is a, a second option uh, uh, where uh, the customer can set the encryption uh, parameters, uh, um, uh, SSID and uh, password on the kernel uh, run string. So just inter uh, interrupt uh, the booting uh, process and uh, put uh, uh, customized uh, passwords and SSID on the uh, kernel. Uh, 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 command line. But uh, of course, uh, the advantage of uh, automatic uh, configuration uh, is lost then. Uh, by the way, uh, to uh, with the uh, uh, WPA encryption, uh, it is uh, the wireless uh, transfer is more secure, but uh, when uh, it comes to uh, uh, enterprise uh, deployment, uh, I would recommend uh, to use uh, just the WPA EAP with uh, backend uh, radius uh, and uh, setting uh, uh, certificates. So the, this is the current uh, best solution how to secure wireless. Any other questions? So thank you for your attention.